Hello students, so welcome back to your biology class. Uh, today we are dealing with the chapter, the excretory system, okay? Now, uh, at first we need to know about the concept uh, that is what is excretion, right? Now, excretion is just the process of removal of chemical waste from the body and it can be done in many ways. Now, before that, we need to know that what are the substances that are required to be removed, right? Now, what are those? Those are, at first, the excess CO2 and water. Now, CO2 is obviously not required by the body, so it needs to be excreted. And excess water is also not good for the body. Otherwise, uh, the dilution by the water may create some problems. Next comes the nitrogenous waste and specifically the urea. Now, uh, after digestion, nitrogenous waste like urea and ammonia is formed. And that urea is very harmful to the health. So, it is required to be excreted. Next are the excess salts. Now, NaCl, which is sodium chloride, we do need for the functioning of the body, but the excess salts are harmful for the functioning of the body and other enzymes and hormones. So, this excess salts also needs to be removed. Next comes the bile pigment. The bile pigments like the bilirubin and the bilirubin that are produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder is also not necessary for the body. So it has to be removed. Now for these excretions, there are three possible ways. Now those are the kidney, the sweat glands and the lungs, right? For this chapter, we are dealing with the kidneys or the urinary system. Now the urinary system the basic is that is it consists of the kidneys, a pair of ureter, a urinary bladder and external opening that is the urethra, right? Next, the kidneys, the ureters are attached to the kidneys by the hilum, hilum. and the area where the ureter joins the kidney, it is broader than the uh, natural diameter of the ureter. So that part is known as the pelvis. Next, that ureter connects with the urinary bladder and the urinary bladder opens in the urethra. Now we need to know that the urinary bladder is the place where the urine is stored. Now we always don't need to urinate, right? But why does that occur? Now that urinary bladder can store urine up to some point but after the brain sends the impulse the urine, urine must be released right now how does the urine stops from flowing out question is that it is because the urethra has two pairs of sphincter muscles which control the opening and closing of the urethra, right? So when pressure is created by the urinary bladder on the urethra, the brain sends the signals that the urine needs to be empty. So due to that impulse, the sphincter muscles open and the urine flows out of the body. So in this way, urine circulates through the urinary system. Next, we will discuss about the internal structure of the kidney. Now here you can see a clear long, longitudinal section of the kidney. Let us discuss about it. Now the outer covering of the kidney is known as the cortex. It is comparatively darker in color. And the inner part of the kidney is known as the medulla. And medulla is comparatively lighter in color. Next comes the striped conical pyramids as you can see here. And the apex of these pyramids are known as the papilla, okay? Now, hilum, as you can see here, forms the notch where the ureter starts. And this broader part is known as the pelvis, where the ureter connects with the kidney, okay? Next comes the renal artery and the renal vein. Now, we know that renal artery attaches from the aorta to the kidney and brings the oxygenated blood towards the kidney and the renal vein carries the deoxygenated blood 
towards the heart through through the vena cava okay i hope you have clearly understood the concept good तो अब जबकि हम किडनी का स्ट्रक्चर बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डिस्कस कर चुके हैं लेट इस मूव ऑन विद द नेफरेंस व्हाट इज नेफरिन और किडनी ट्यूब्यूल एंड नेफरिन इज द स्मॉलेस्ट यूनिट ऑफ द किडनी और द यूरिनरी सिस्टम और द बेसिकली द स्ट्रक्चरल यूनिट ऑफ द एक्सक्रीटरी और द यूरिनरी सिस्टम इज द नेफरिन नाउ लेट इस डिस्कस अबाउट इट्स स्ट्रक्चर नाउ नेफरिन एट फर्स्ट इज कंटेन्स द बोमेंस कैप्सियल एंड द Glomerulus. Now, Bowman's capsule is a cup-shaped structure, as you can see here, which contains the glomerulus. Now, what is glomerulus? Glomerulus is nothing but a, a knot of capillaries or a contain uh, Now, what is glomerulus? Glomerulus is nothing but a ball of interknotted capillaries. Okay. Now this Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus is together known as the Malpighian body or the Malpighian capsule. Okay. Now what is glomerulus? Glomerulus is nothing but a ball of interknotted capillaries. Okay. Now this Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus is together known as the Malpighian body or the Malpighian capsule. Okay. Next comes the PCT, which is the proximal convoluted tubule which arises from the Bowman's capsule. Next comes this U-shaped structure here which is known as the loop of Henle or the Henle slope. The loop of Henle continues with the DCT which is distal convoluted tubule and this distal convoluted tubule joins the collecting duct where the urine is stored okay before joining the ureter. Now this Henle loop is divided into three parts. This loop is known as the descending loop. Here this one is the transcending loop and here this one is the ascending loop. Okay. Next we will discuss about the blood supply to the nephron. Now there are two pairs of arteries. Those are the afferent arterioles and the Efferent arterioles. Now, what are afferent arterioles? Now, afferent arterioles are the much wider arterioles that enters the nephron through glomerulus. And efferent arteriole, which is comparatively thinner lumen, it exits the glomerulus. Okay. Next, we get the renal veins. Now, renal veins are joined by the capillaries which is formed by the joining of the renal vein and the renal artery and this area where the capillaries of the renal arteriole and the renal vein joins it is known as the vasa recta what is it called the vasa recta okay next what we need to know is that the efferent arteriole actually brings the oxygenated blood from the aorta and enters the glomerulus and the deoxygenated blood from the kidney leaves from here by the renal veins and joins the vena cava okay now uh, we need to know that the date of the formation of the production of urine or rather we can say the date of production or the rate of blood that passes through the kidney is 1 to 2 liters per minute for an average adult. Okay. Good. Next comes the physical properties of the urine. Now, we know that the urine color is naturally crystal, uh, crystal clear yellow. Hota hai. Okay. Sometimes it can vary. Like it can vary from colorless or to darker yellow. Okay. Depends upon the water content of the body. Right. Good. Next comes the volume of the urine. So the volume of the urine stands as it's 1 to 1.5 liters of urine is produced per day, which is actually a large amount, right? Now, the pH nature of the urine is 5 to 8 or usually 6. Now, 5 to 8, that means the pH of urine can vary from basic to as well as acidic, right? Now, 
while this varies now the more protein or the more animal fat we consume sometimes the urine becomes more acidic okay good next comes the odor now the odor of the urine is almost ammonia like okay next is the specific gravity now the specific gravity of urine varies from 1.003 to 1.035 okay understood okay next comes the constituents of the urine now what are the constituents of the urine uh, urine constitutes many in inorganic salts like the sodium chloride nacl kcl and also urea creatinine which are ammonia uric acid which are actually the nitrogenous waste and are not required by the body hence excreted by the kidneys or the urinary system okay. urea is the maximum content of the urine that is why the human we are called as ureotelic what are we known as ureotelic and we excrete as the ureotelic nature okay good now comes the abnormal constituents of urine now ye to humne dekh hi liya ki ye kuch normal contents hai jo urine mein har waqt hota hai lekin kabhi kabhi kuch abnormal कॉम्पोनेंट्स भी यूरिन से पास होता है ठीक है सो वॉट आर दे फर्स्ट बीन द ब्लड सेल्स और समटाइम्स ब्लड सेल्स और ब्लड इज पास डाउन बाई द यूरिन विच वी ऑब्वियसली नो इज ड्यू टू सम इन्फेक्शन बट दैट कंडीशन ऑफ पासिंग ऑफ द ब्लड थ्रू द यूरिन इज नोन एज हेमा चूरियर ओके वॉट इज इट कॉल्ड हेमा चूरियर नेक्स्ट कम्स द ग्लूकोज समटाइम्स द एक्सेस ग्लूकोज इज पास थ्रू द यूरिन जो नॉर्मल तो बिल्कुल भी नहीं है एंड दैट कंडीशन इज नोन एज ग्लूकोसूरिया वाई ग्लूकोसूरिया ऑफर्स नो एक्सेस ग्लूकोस मीन्स बॉडी इज नॉट एबल टू एब्जॉर्व ग्लूकोज और देर इज एक्सेस सिक्रीशन ऑफ ग्लूकोगन राइट दैट कंडीशन इज नोन एज डायबिटीज मेलिटस ओके नेक्स्ट कम्स एल्बूमिन ड्यू टू सम हाई ब्लड प्रेशर excess albumin and protein is passed through the urine that is the glomerulus which contains the fine pores for filtration the glomerulus is not able to filter it due to the high blood pressure so some albumin and protein pass through the urine during that next comes the bile pigment now bile pigment urine se direct to excrete nahi hota but jab hota hai that is due to various reasons like anemia hepatitis or liver cirrhosis liver cirrhosis is the that means the liver is damaged totally right it can also lead to internal bleeding in the liver which is very harmful so these are the few abnormal constituents that is passed in the urine which is not normally passed right okay next we will discuss about the process of filtration of blood and the formation of urine the production of urine is done in three steps those are the ultra filtration the reabsorption and the tubular secretion okay so pehle discuss karte hain ultra filtration ko what happens is that the efferent arterioles as we have learned previously that the efferent arterioles are much narrower than that of the afferent arterioles right as a result the blood after entering the glomerulus leaves the through the efferent arterioles at a high pressure due to the narrower space this high pressure is also known as the hydrostatic pressure now due to this pressure all the fluid is not able to pass out through the efferent arteriole and due to that pressure the liquid part of the blood excretes the exits the glomerulus and enters the bowman's capsule right and the bowman's capsule have fine the pores which let the fluid flow through the pct and through the nephron right so this filter filter part or the glomerular filtrate moves down the nephron okay we will denote the glomerular filtrate by gf okay 
Now, this urine is not yet, sorry, now this fluid part is not yet formed urine. We will call it just the glomerular filtrate, right? Now, the other part of the blood, which, uh, which, which is much thicker due to the drainage of the fluid part into the bowel's capsule, exceeds the glomerulus by efferent arterioles. So, the blood leaving the kidneys are much thicker than that of the blood entering the kidneys, right? Uh, it's a very easy concept. Okay. Now comes the reabsorption. Now, what happens in reabsorption is that the glomerular filtrate part, which is quite a dilute solution, contains glucose, sodium, which are very necessary for the body. Now, if we excrete this, then how the body gets all nutrients? So, what happens there is that these essential elements, those are glucose, sodium, are absorbed here in the nephron. Right now, what happens? Some water is also absorbed. Okay, now you will say that if water is absorbed, then how do urine form? No, because all of the water is obviously not absorbed. Water is not absorbed, it is not absorbed. If more water will be drained out, then there will be less urine formation, which will lead to further complication. So, Water उतना ही absorb होता है जितना blood के concentration को maintain करने के लिए जरूरत होता है, right? उससे ज़्यादा नहीं होता। तो this type of absorption is known as selective absorption, okay? Now after the selective absorption and the reabsorption, what happens is that the tubular secretion. Now what is tubular secretion? In tubular secretion, the walls of the tubular cells of the DCT secretes important elements like the K plus ions and some chemicals, right? Now, these chemicals contains of obviously urea and others. Now, these K, excess K plus ions and urea is excreted by the tubular secretion into the left glomerular filtrate. Now, after the glomerular filtrate joins these chemicals, that is the nitrogenous waste and the keto ions, then it forms the urine, right? Now, after the urine is formed, it is collected and stored in the coll collecting duct, then it moves through the ure uh, ureter and reaches the urinary bladder where it is stored. Then brain sends the signals or the impulse for the urination, that is, if there is excess, is if it excess the content of the urinary bladder, then the brain sends signal that we need to urinate, right? Now, that process is known as the maturation. That is, urination ka scientific term, maturation hota hai, take it. So, brain ke impulse aane ke baad, jo yaha pe sphincter muscles tha, uh, ure, uretra ke pehle, to wo sphincter muscles khul jata hai. To wo sphincter muscles khulne ke wajay se, the urine passes out of the body. So, in this way, by ultrafiltration, reabsorption, and tubular secretion, the urine is formed and excreted by the out of the body. Okay, good. Now, how is this urine formation regulated? That is, kitne frequently urine hoga, ki nahi hoga, to wo kaun control karta hai? That is controlled by a hormone named as antidiuretic hormone known as the ADH. Okay. Now, ADH is secreted by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland that is present in our brain, right? Now, what ADH does, it sends nerve impulses to the kidneys and the urinary bladders and the sphincter muscles, okay? Now, if the ADH production reduces, it, calls, it, it is called di diuresis, right? Now, what is diuresis? Diuresis is the frequent need to urinate, right? When urine ka matra bahot zyada bar jata hai, like we frequently need to urinate, that is due to the reduction in the production of ADH hormones. Okay, good. Now, next comes the osmoregulation. Now, what is osmoregulation? 
ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन इज द रेगुलेशन ऑफ द ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर ऑफ द ब्लड लाइक कितना ब्लड फिल्टर होगा या नहीं होगा कितना ब्लड यूरिन फॉर्म करेगा दैट इज वॉट ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन इज ऑल अबाउट राइट नाउ इन समर्स वी हैव सीन ऑल दो वी ड्रिंक मच मोर वाटर दैन दू विंटर we excrete less or we urinate less in the summers why so obviously because during summers we sweat that is we perspirate now due to that perspiration maximum of the water is excreted by the sweat glands only to so, urine ke liye to bahut hi pani kam bach jata hoga na so that is why the urination rate during the summers is much lesser than that of the winter next comes the condition cholera now what is cholera in cholera the kidneys tubules excessively absorb the water right jitna zarurat hota hai usse bhi zyada water absorb kar leta hai uski wajah se kuch urea urea aur ammonia bhi uske sath absorb ho jata hai so that contains the toxic that causes the toxification of the body right now that toxification leads to cholera okay good next we will discuss about two things which are the gout and the stones now what is gout gout is nothing but the accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joints of the body right which is quite painful the stones are formed by the accumulation of some inorganic salts like calcium oxalate and the bile salts which is bilirubin and biliverdin now that salts accumulate and forms crystals and which is known as the stones or the kidney stones now kidney stones can be very painful and can even lead to damage which is very harmful right good next comes the concept of the artificial kidney to so, artificial kidney ka basic concept of sabko malum hai par fir se ek bar jaan lete hain to what is artificial kidney artificial kidney is used when there is the damage of the kidneys right now when both the kidneys are damaged we definitely need dialysis although ek kidney damage hone ki wajah se bhi dialysis ki zarurat hota hai but but uh, when both of them are damaged there is no other way than using the artificial kidney now artificial kidney is also known as the dialysis machine now dialysis machine ko me kya hota hai is that the blood is filtrated outside the body in that machine uh channels are connected in the radial artery in the arms through which the blood passes out of the body and it is filtered of the toxic waste and the nitrogenous waste and then the purified blood is again sent back to the body so dialysis machine is really important for patients whose kidneys are damaged okay now with this discussion of the artificial kidney we end this chapter of the excretory system i know this chapter is short but we have many important details and information so you have to watch this video properly and with great concentration i will also attach the notes with it and thank you for coming